Feng Shui is a practice with a long history in China. It incorporates the laws of the universe and allows people to pursue good fortune and avoid misfortune through the choices they make in their living and working and in relation to the surrounding environment. The original true essence of Feng Shui is to achieve harmony between humans and nature. However, over time, Feng Shui has come to be regarded as a superstition and puzzles many people, including some of our government officials. Professor Yuli Liu from the Department of Philosophy at the Party School of the Central Committee of CPC is going to lecture on the governing principles of ancient China from the perspective of traditional Chinese culture to dispel the myths of feng shui. Here, from Professor Liu's lecture series on the governing principles of ancient China, is the section titled Where to Find the Real Feng Shui. Professor Yu Li Liu graduated with a bachelor's and master's degree in philosophy from Renmin University of China. She is currently a professor at the Department of Philosophy at the Party School of Central Committee of CPC and a mentor for doctoral students majoring in ethics. She is also a visiting professor at Tsinghua College, Sun Yat-sen University. Professor Yu Li Liu has published many academic papers, received a PhD from the University of Hull, UK, and is a postdoctoral scholar at the National University of Singapore. She has been invited to give lectures and participate in workshop seminars in the UK, Italy, the USA, Canada, Australia, Japan, Singapore, Indonesia and Hong Kong. In 2015, 2016 and 2017, she was invited to UNESCO headquarters in Paris to give talks based on the governing principles of ancient China. The central theme of her talks was the importance of the sage's education. In other words, learning from the wisdom of the past and also how to promote moral education. She has contributed greatly towards the dissemination of Oriental culture in the Western world. This video was edited by the Governing Principles of Ancient China Translation Team of the Pure Land Learning College Association and is based on the lectures by Professor Yu Li Liu. Greetings, dear friends. Today I will share with you where to find the real feng shui. Of the many people interested in traditional Chinese culture, some of them like to seek advice on feng shui. For example, when moving to new offices, they seek advice on which direction the seat should face or if certain objects should be placed in areas that may improve their luck. Although we may not entirely disagree, real feng shui is not about this. What is real feng shui about? Where can we find real feng shui and attain good luck? We can be inspired by a story in the Book of School Sayings of Confucius, compiled in the Governing Principles of Ancient China. It documents a question the King of Lu asked Confucius. The King asked, Should I believe it is unlucky to have an eastern extension of the residence? In other words, the King of Lu was concerned that the eastern facing extension could lead to bad feng shui and bring him misfortune. How to answer the king? Confucius responded, I have heard of five things that may bring misfortune. An eastern facing extension is not one of them. What are the five things? Confucius continued, Harming others to benefit oneself will bring misfortune to oneself. One who harms others for self-benefit will have created bitterness and hatred toward himself. As time passes, the victim will seize the opportunity to take revenge. So how can we say harming others benefits oneself? Harming others will never benefit oneself. Helping others is the best way to help oneself because when we are always helping people, we will build better relationships. Furthermore, others would come to lend a helping hand when we are in trouble. 
Overall, while harming others will never benefit oneself, helping people always will. Second is abandoning the elderly for the young will bring misfortune upon a family. We should be able to understand this in today's society. People abandon the elderly and do not care for their parents. They focus all their attention on their children. What is the result? Their children will become spoiled, self-centred little princesses and princes. This has now become a very serious problem. For example, suppose parents did 10 things for their child, but one of those 10 things did not satisfy the child. The child would become very angry. How do we explain this? It's because we no longer study the classics that have been passed down from the ancient sages. Neither do we practice these teachings in the education of our children. The sages of the past used a tree as an analogy to describe the relationship of a family. The fruits of the tree are the children. The trunk represents the parents and the roots are the grandparents. Using this analogy, if we hope to have abundant healthy fruits, which part of the tree should receive the water and fertiliser? We should water and fertilise the roots of the tree so they will prosper and grow. The tree will then bear abundant fruits. However, most parents nowadays focus all their attention on their children. It's as if they were giving the nutrients to the fruits instead of the roots. Unable to absorb the nutrients, the fruits would rot. And since the roots could not get enough nutrients, the whole tree would become sick. We can thus see how abandoning the elderly for the young will bring misfortune upon a family. When parents spoil their children and turn them into little princesses or princes, they will be no one to carry on family traditions. Their family will be ruined and this will be tragic for the family. Third is excluding virtuous officials and valuing dishonest ones will bring misfortune upon a country. This refers to virtuous people who have been disregarded or dismissed while those in power are dishonest. As a result, the country will get into trouble. In the governing principles of ancient China, Mencius said, a benevolent person ought to be entrusted to a position of leadership. Why? Because placing a dishonest person in a position of authority would be equivalent to spreading his evil deeds, which would have a negative impact on society and affect the majority of people. Therefore, this would be unfortunate for the country. Fourth is when elderly do not teach and the young do not learn, the society will experience misfortune. Those who are elderly do not wish to pass on their experiences to the young. Why? Because young people are arrogant and look down on the elderly. They feel that the experiences of the elderly are outdated. Also, young people lack the humility to consult the elderly. This is very unfortunate for society. Are the values of our ancestors outdated and useless? Our misunderstandings of traditional culture continue to deepen. We continue to disregard the teachings of the ancient sages while we unforgivingly criticise them. What are the results? Undutiful children harm, even kill, their parents. Siblings fight with one another and take each other to court merely for the sake of trivial assets. No one will compromise. Husbands and wives do not love each other and no longer care for one another. There is no gratitude or morality within their relationship. We also see that there is no trust among friends while people continue to deceive one another. There is no honesty and trustworthiness. These conditions are the results of neglecting traditional, moral and ethical education. Therefore, when the elderly do not teach and the young do not learn, the society will experience misfortune. The last one is, when sages withdraw and fools wield power, 
the world will experience misfortune. Why do people with virtue, morality and knowledge retire from the world? As the Chinese say, if placed in a position with authority, a virtuous person would help all the people in the world. If without a position and authority, he would perfect himself through self-cultivation. This means that if one has the chance to serve the country using what he has learned, he should do so to help all the people and contribute to the country. So, why would sages withdraw? Because their abilities are not recognised and they are not entrusted with responsibility or authority. Therefore, given no other alternative, they would retreat and try to improve themselves instead of working alongside those corrupting the world. Many people today work for immediate benefits and fight for personal gains. As those who are virtuous would not join these people, the virtuous people would be discriminated against and bullied. They would not be given opportunities and may be picked on for no reason. So what should they do in such a situation? The only option would be to take a step back. In this way, they may still be able to help other people. Therefore, the reason why sages chose to retreat was because their virtue was not recognised and respected. They were unable to use their abilities, so they would rather withdraw and people without virtue, knowledge and wisdom would assume leadership positions. Such an outcome is the world will experience misfortune. After discussing the five reasons for misfortune, Confucius said that an eastern-facing extension is not one of them. Based on this story, we conclude the real feng shui affecting one's luck lies in one's own heart. In Liao Fan's Four Lessons, it is said, all the fields of merit are within one's own heart. If one seeks from the true mind within, one can be in touch with all that one wishes for. So where does one's luck or merit come from? It is irrespective of whether you have good or bad feng shui. Luck and merit come from one's heart. Likewise, feng shui can only be changed by one's heart. Ancient sages also said, a fortunate person lives in a fortunate place. A fortunate place will house a fortunate person. A fortunate person always lives in a place with good feng shui, even if the place of residence was not a good place to begin with. After a virtuous person has stayed there for a period of time, the feng shui of that location will change and become better. A place of great feng shui can only be found in the residence of a person of merit and virtue. Previously, Professor Liu quoted a conversation between Confucius and King of Lu from the governing principles of ancient China in relation to feng shui. Confucius has warned us of the five inauspicious things that bring misfortune. Professor Liu further told us that in the heart of each person there is a field of merit. This is where the real feng shui can be found. Whether feng shui is good or bad depends on our heart. Ancient Chinese told us the fields of merit need to be cultivated by hearts. Only a virtuous person is able to cultivate the fields of merit well. How can we cultivate fields of merit well and make them good places with great feng shui? Let us continue with lectures on the governing principles of ancient China where to find the real feng shui. Cultivating well our fields of merit is the way to make the best feng shui and obtain good fortune. The ancient Chinese emphasised that all the fields of merit are within one's own heart. How should we cultivate our fields well to make the best feng shui our reward? Among the fields of merit, three are considered the most important. They are the field of gratitude, the field of respect, and the field of compassion. 
Therefore, when we want to see whether someone will have good feng shui and great future success, or if the person has virtue, we can examine that person from these three aspects. Let's talk about the first field of merit, gratitude. If one is grateful and knows to repay the kindness received from others, one is cultivating and amassing merit and will attain great feng shui. This person will undoubtedly have a bright future. This is one of the reasons why Chinese people emphasise filial piety towards their parents, which is cultivating the field of gratitude. Should we be grateful to our parents? Of course, in our lives, our parents are the people who have given us the most and best unconditional kindness. To cultivate one's attitude in filial piety is to enable one to be grateful and repay kindness to others. In the classics of filial piety, in the governing principles of ancient China, we read that those who don't love their parents, yet love others, are against virtue. Likewise, those who don't respect their parents, yet respect others, are against propriety. For example, if we are returning from a trip, we would usually bring souvenirs back home. Now who would we think of when we are buying these gifts? Which gift would we put more thought into? Most likely our business partners, our superiors, and those who have an influence on our future development. We always would give special attention to gifts for them. How about our parents? Sometimes we don't even think about them. This is a self-benefit mindset and has nothing to do with gratitude. If someone can be of benefit to us, we may try our best to flatter him. When this person becomes harmful to us, then we may forget his kindness and do bad things to him. Were we so selfish and thankless when we were young? Let's look back at the time when we were in university. We were not polluted by society at that time. When we went home during the holidays, we'd buy gifts for our parents, our siblings, and even our high school teachers. This was normal behavior. However, as we grew older, we had more selfish thoughts. When we continued to buy gifts, we only thought of our leaders and our business partners while we neglected our parents. This is disregarding virtue and propriety. This shows that we do not possess the proper virtue and the proper principles when dealing with people and matters. We have developed a selfish mind. Consequently, no matter what we do, how well we might perform in our career, or even how much money we earn, if we do not show our love to our parents, then our days of good fortune are numbered and we will be doomed to failure one day. Professor Liu quoted from the governing principles of ancient China and explained the five inauspicious things that bring misfortune. She further explained that there are fields of merit in our heart and we should learn how to cultivate them to make the best feng shui and bring good fortune to us. These fields consist of gratitude, respect and mercy. To cultivate these fields of merit properly, one must first cultivate the field of gratitude and be grateful for its source of kindness. This can be shown by our filial piety towards our parents and our gratitude towards teachers, superiors, leaders, friends and all those people who have shown us kindness. It can even be shown by our gratitude towards our country, life, nature, etc. If we are grateful, willing to help others at any time and trying to repay the kindness of others, then we would certainly become a person of great virtue. Now that we understand gratitude in one of the fields of merit, let's continue on to two other fields of merit, respect and compassion. The second field of merit is respect. Everyone should show respect. A heart of respect can also determine whether people have potential in their career. In the Analects, a disciple of Confucius said, when a virtuous person is respectful and courteous to all, he will have people all over the world as his brothers. Why? 
because a virtuous person is courteous, respects everyone, and is always willing to help those in need. Thus, wherever he goes, people will treat him as a brother. We as students of traditional Chinese culture have had similar experiences. We encounter like-minded people who are also students of traditional Chinese culture when we travel to different provinces and cities across China giving lectures on traditional Chinese culture. It thrills us to meet them because it's almost like seeing our own siblings. They are friendly and always thinking about our needs. Alternatively, we often see that young people today cannot interact well with others for one month or even one week. They do not seem to be able to get along with other people. Why? It's because having been raised as little princesses and princes, their wants and desires have been the family's primary concern. Therefore, they have become selfish in their thoughts and behaviour. Once these children have grown up and interact with others, it is not unusual to see conflicts arise. Therefore, we can clearly see the importance of having respect for others. This is why we are advocating the teachings in Guidelines for Being a Good Person, DZ Gui. It teaches basic proprieties, while the essence of propriety is respect. In the Book of Rights of the Governing Principles of Ancient China, it is said, respect all which means we must respect everything. Through the study and implementation of guidelines for being a good person, we learn to respect our parents, siblings and friends. And further, we learn to respect everyone. The whole book is about respect. In the Analects, Confucius said, if one has not learned the rules of propriety, one's character will never be established. Those who do not acknowledge the fundamental necessity for propriety will encounter all sorts of obstacles in their life. They will not be able to manage interpersonal relationships well. This is why we now see that when young people first go to work, they are unable to feel contentment in their job for even one month. Ultimately, they quit. It's because they do not understand the fundamental concepts of propriety. They do not practice the teachings of guidelines for being a good person. Therefore, we need to cultivate a heart of respect. Not only will this strengthen our virtue, it will also improve our ability and our attitude to interact with others. One of the best role models of propriety is Confucius. Throughout his life, he always practiced the five virtues of gentleness, kindness, respectfulness, thriftiness, and humility. His descendants have also continued to cultivate these virtues. Even today, the descendants of Confucius are still respected. Their cultivation has continued for 2,000 years and thrived for over 80 generations. When we interact with descendants of Confucius, we can see they possess qualities that are absent in others. This is something that has been passed down from within Confucius's family. Another good role model of propriety is Lao Tzu, the founder of Taoism. He observed the ways of heaven and earth and told us we must always have a kind and loving heart towards others. We should consider the needs of others and always be gentle and humble towards them. If we practice in this way, others will always welcome us wherever we go and we will live a happy life. Therefore, we should learn from the ancient sages and respect all with propriety. This is the second field of merit, respect. Let's look at the third field of merit, compassion. Compassion is the commiseration spoken of by Mencius. In the governing principles of ancient China, Mencius said, the feeling of commiseration is the beginning of benevolence. The heart of commiseration is empathy. To be empathetic is to acknowledge how others feel. This is an inherent nature we all have. For example, there are two children who are running around playing. One of the children stumbles, falls down and is about to cry, but the other child has already started to cry 
That's because the second child felt the pain of the child who had fallen down. This is empathy, which is intrinsic to all human beings. It is something that is not taught. However, some teachers and parents teach children in the wrong way. They might say, it was not you who fell, so why are you crying? Stop crying. It has nothing to do with you. Gradually, children who listen to such reasoning will lose their empathy towards others and feel they should not concern themselves with other people, that the pain of others has nothing to do with them. They will become increasingly detached from and indifferent to the feelings of others. Therefore, to possess a compassionate heart, we first need to satisfy two conditions. The first condition is to have empathy towards the pain and suffering of others. The second condition is to wish to help relieve that pain and suffering. When one has satisfied these two conditions, one will have achieved a compassionate heart. The field of respect is to respect others. The field of compassion is to have empathy towards others and to help them. Professor Liu quoted from the Analects and explained the wisdom of Confucius. If we can respect everyone we interact with, then they will show us the same respect. People will have respect and courtesy for us as we were brothers from all over the world. If we can have empathy towards the weak or those who are in adversity and offer a helping hand, then we can say we have a compassionate, benevolent heart. If one can cultivate well these three fields of merit, one will make great feng shui and lead a happy life. Are there such people in this world? Professor Liu says yes, both in China and abroad, in the past and the present. Let us continue with lectures on the governing principles of ancient China, where to find the real feng shui. Ms. Teresa Xu was a national treasure in Singapore. Using her as an example, we can learn about compassion and how it can help us to lead a happy life. When Teresa Xu was a young child, she saw her mother do something that influenced the rest of her life in terms of how she interacted with people and other matters. One day, her mother had prepared a delicious meal, which the family was about to enjoy. Unexpectedly, there was a knock on the door. When her mother opened it, she saw a group of beggars standing there. They were pale, as if they had not eaten for several days. They had come to beg for some food. Without any hesitation, Teresa's mother immediately turned and brought out all the food for them to eat. Teresa was very curious, so standing behind her mother, she just watched them. She realised that there is great joy in helping others especially after she saw the great joy on the faces of those beggars who had not eaten for days, as well as the satisfaction and happiness after they had finished eating. After that, she decided to dedicate her life to helping others and making them happy. Later, she went to Paraguay in South America to work as a volunteer in a very poor village. She did not ask for anything in return, but only wanted to help by providing the people with education and health care. Even today, if you were to visit that village in Paraguay and mention her name, many people would still remember her, speak of her and say they miss her. Years later, her mother called her and said, If helping people is what you want to do, you can do it anywhere. I am old and need your help. Teresa, upon hearing this, realised what her mother meant and immediately returned to Singapore to look after her. Her mother lived until she was over 100 years old this example brings to mind the Chinese saying that families with the accumulation of merits will have lasting blessings. Teresa began establishing nursing homes after returning to Singapore, but she later withdrew and had other people manage these homes. She continued to help elderly people in their 80s and 90s. She treated them as if they were her siblings, which made them feel very comfortable and happy. To put yourself in the shoes of others is the most precious virtue in the world. When Teresa Xu was helping others, she empathised with what they felt and genuinely provided the care they needed. In her book, 
the secret to happiness from a 106-year-old, someone asked her what the secret to her longevity was. She replied that she was happiest when seeing the smiles of happiness on the faces of those whom she had helped. Their smiles were infectious because they made her happy and worry-free all the time. What can we learn from Teresa's experiences? Cultivating well the fields of merit in our heart can bring us the best feng shui with great good fortune. Also, our empathy and mercy can help us to become benevolent. Having a kind heart allows us to live an honest life that is free from worry. Another Chinese saying is, a benevolent person will gain longevity. A kind-hearted person will be in a good frame of mind, which is good for their health. Professor Liu used the example of Singapore's own Mother Teresa, a woman who dedicated her entire life to charity to show us that being a noble person is not something beyond the reach of anyone's capability. We just need to have a heart of compassion, vow to do good deeds through charity and establish good relationships with others. Once we do this, we too can become a noble person. This will bring us calmness, fulfilment, happiness and longevity. So naturally, the field of merit in our heart will become the best feng shui. To sum up, how can we find the best feng shui and attain the best good luck and good fortune? The fields of merit need to be cultivated by hearts because all the fields of merit are within one's own heart, wherein lies the real feng shui. That is all for today. Thank you.